Lenses. You must have seen lenses used in day-to-day -day life. Some examples are the lenses used by old persons for reading, lens embedded in the front door of the house, the lens which the watchmaker attaches to his eye, etc. Lenses are used in spectacles. They are also used in telescopes. A lens is a transparent medium bound by two surfaces. The lens which has two spherical surfaces which are puffed up outwards is called a convex or double convex lens. This lens is thicker near the center as compared to the edges. The lens with both surfaces spherical on the inside is called a concave or double concave lens. This lens is thinner at the center as compared to its edges. Different types of lenses are as shown. A ray of light gets refracted twice while passing through a lens, once while entering the lens and once while emerging from the lens. The direction of the ray changes because of these refractions. Both the surfaces of most lenses are parts of a sphere. The cross sections of convex and concave lenses are as shown. The surface marked as 1 is part of sphere S1 while surface 2 is part of sphere S2. Center of curvature C. The centers of spheres whose parts form surfaces of the lenses are called centers of curvatures of the lenses. A lens with both surfaces spherical has two centers of curvature C1 and C2. Radius of curvature R. The radii R1 and R2 of the spheres whose parts form surfaces of the lenses are called the radii or curvature of the lens. Principal axis. The imaginary line passing through both centers of curvature is called the principal axis of the lens. Optical center, O. The point inside a lens on the principal axis through which light rays pass without changing their path is called the optical center of the lens. As shown, rays P1, Q1, P2, Q2 passing through O are going along a straight line. Thus, O is the optical center of the lens. Principal focus, F. When light rays parallel to the principal axis are incident on a convex lens, they converge to a point on the principal axis. This point is called the principal focus of the lens. As shown, F1 and F2 are the principal foci of the convex lens. Light rays parallel to principal axis falling on a convex lens come together, that is, get focused at a point on the principal axis. So this type of lens is called a converging lens. Rays traveling parallel to the principal axis of a concave lens diverge after refraction in such a way that they appear to be coming out of a point on the principal axis. This point is called the principal focus of the concave lens. As shown, F1 and F2 are the principal foci of the concave lens. Light rays parallel to the principal axis falling on the concave lens go away from one another, diverge after refraction. So this type of lens is called a divergent lens. Focal length F. The distance between the optical center and the principal focus of a lens is called its focal length. Try this. Material, convex lens, screen, meter scale, stand for the lens, etc. Method, keeping the screen fixed, obtain a clear image of a distant object like a tree or a building with the help of the lens on the screen. Measure the distance between the screen and the lens with the help of the meter scale. Now turn the other side of the lens towards the screen. Again, obtain a clear image of the distant object on the screen by moving the lens forward or backward. Measure the distance between the screen and the lens again. 
What is this distance between the lens and the screen called? The image of a distant object is obtained close to the focus of the lens. Hence, the above distance is the focal length of the lens. What will happen if you use a concave lens in this experiment? Answer. Ray diagram for refraction. You have learned the rules for drawing ray diagrams for spherical mirrors. Similarly, one can obtain the images formed by lenses with the help of ray diagrams. One can obtain the position, size and nature of the images with the help of these diagrams. Images formed by convex lenses. One can use following three rules to draw ray diagrams of images obtained by convex lenses. Rule 1. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, the refracted ray passes through the principal focus. Rule 2. When the incident ray passes through the principal focus, the refracted ray is parallel to the principal axis. Rule 3. When the incident ray passes through the optical center of the lens, it passes without changing its direction. Try this. Material, a convex lens, screen, meter scale, stand for the lens, chalk, candle, etc. Method, 1. Draw a straight line along the center of a long table. 2. Place the lens on the stand at the central point O of the line. 3. Place the screen on one side of the lens. Move it along the line so as to get a clear image of a distant object. Mark its position as F1. 4. Measure the distance between O and F1. Mark a point at distance to F1 from O on the same side of F1 and mark it as 2F1. 5. Repeat actions 3 and 4 on the other side of the lens and mark F2 and 2F2 on the straight line. 6. Now place the burning candle on the other side of lens far beyond 2F1. Place the screen on the opposite side of the lens and obtain a clear image of the candle by moving it forward or backward along the line. Note the position, size and nature of the image. 7. Repeat action 6 by placing the candle beyond 2F1 at 2F1, between 2F1 and F1, at F1 and between F1 and O. Note your observations. Observations Can you recall what are real and virtual images? How will you find out whether an image is real or virtual? Can a virtual image be obtained on a screen? Answer as shown, an object AB is placed beyond the point 2F1, the incident ray BC starting from B and going parallel to the principal axis goes through the principal focus F2 after refraction along CT. The ray BO starting from B and passing through the optical center O of the lens goes along OS without changing its direction. It intersects CT in B dash. This means that the image of B is formed at B dash. As A is situated on the principal axis, its image will also be located along the principal axis at A dash, vertically above B dash. Thus A dash B dash will be the image of AB formed by the lens. So we learn that if an object is placed beyond 2F1, the image is formed between F2 and 2F2. It is real and inverted and its size is smaller than that of the object. Images formed by concave lenses. We can obtain the images obtained by concave lenses using the following rules. 1. When the incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, the refracted ray, when extended backwards, passes through the focus. 2. When the incident ray passes through the focus, the refracted ray is parallel to the principal axis. As shown, object PQ is placed between F1 and 2F1. 
in front of a concave lens. The incident ray PA starting from P and going parallel to the principal axis goes along AD after refraction. If AD is extended backwards, it appears to come from F1. The incident ray PO starting from P and passing through O goes along the same direction after refraction. PO intersects the extended ray AF1 at P1, that is, P1 is the image of P. As the point Q is on the principal axis, its image is formed along the axis at the point Q1 directly below P1. Thus, P1 Q1 is the image of PQ. The image formed by a concave lens is always virtual, erect and smaller than the object. Sign Convention According to the Cartesian sign convention, the optical center O is taken to be the origin. The principal axis is the x-axis of the frame of reference. The sign convention is as follows. 1. The object is always placed on the left of the lens. All distances parallel to the principal axis are measured from the optical center O. 2. The distance measured to the right of O are taken to be positive, while those measured to the left are taken to be negative. 3. Distances perpendicular to the principal axis and above it are taken to be positive. 4. Distances perpendicular to the principal axis and below it are taken to be negative. The focal length of a convex lens is positive, while that of a concave lens is negative. Lens formula. The formula showing the relation between distance of the object U, the distance of the image V, and the focal length F is called the lens formula. 1 upon V minus 1 upon U is equal to 1 upon F. The lens formula is same for any spherical lens and any distance of the object from the lens. It is, however, necessary to use the sign convention properly. Magnification M. The magnification due to a lens is the ratio of the height of the image H2 to the height of the object H1. Magnification is equal to height of the image upon height of the object. That is, M is equal to H2 upon H1. Equation 1. The magnification due to a lens is also related to the distance of the object U and that of the image V from the lens. Magnification is equal to distance of the image upon distance of the object. That is, M is equal to V upon U. Equation 2. From equations 1 and 2, what is the relation between H1, H2, U and V? Answer. H2 upon H1 is equal to V upon U. Use your brain power. Take two convex lenses of different sizes. Collect sunlight on a paper using one of the lenses. The paper will start burning after a while. Note the time required for the paper to start burning. Repeat the process for the second lens. Is the time required the same in both cases? What can you tell from this? From the experiment, we can say that when the heat radiation is focused on the paper at a higher rate, less time is required for the paper to start burning. Power of a lens The capacity of a lens to converge or diverge incident rays is called its power, P. The power of a lens depends on its focal length. Power is the inverse of its focal length, F. F is expressed in meters. The unit of the power of a lens is diopter, D. P is equal to 1 upon F into M. 1 diopter is equal to 1 upon 1 M. Combination of lenses. If two lenses with focal lengths F1 and F2 are kept in contact with each other, the combination has an effective focal length given by 1 upon F is equal to 1 upon F1 plus 1 upon F2. If the powers of the two lenses are P1 and P2, 
then the effective power of their combination is P is equal to P1 plus P2. Thus, when two lenses are kept touching each other, the power of the combined lens is equal to the sum of their individual powers.